Then we're going to turn the uh, ultrasonic cleaner on and get it warmed up. And of course, every video people ask me what I use for ultrasonic cleaner, etc., etc. And I'll pull it down for a minute, but we are having an issue with it. There's an on off switch back here that has been acting up a little bit. Kind of flick it a little bit and it would turn on and turn off. Now it's not turning on at all. So I figure we'll pull that out and uh, put it on the bench. We'll drain the fluid out of it. It has to get cleaned anyway. It's got a dump on it. And maybe we can just bypass that switch altogether. And what I have is one of those timers that you kind of plug in. Maybe we can use this to, you know, have it turn on and turn back off after an hour. Not sure. But got to fix it first before we can use it. So what is in them is that right there. You can look it up. I think you can get them on eBay. I grabbed them at either AutoZone or Walmart. Maybe both, actually. Yeah. So it's just regular uh, cans that you would put a carburetor in and, and dunk them, but I put them in the ultrasonic cleaner instead. And this is probably done quite a bit. It's been in here about eight, nine months. I know the lighting's not that great, but you know how you can see through the basket. It looks pretty good, looks pretty clear. That's almost what the stuff looks like when you get it new. And all the debris has settled to the bottom. So I'm gonna drain that out and then we can clean the dirt out of the, the sludge out of the bottom of it. And essentially it's just new fluid all over again. Probably should have leaned it. No, yeah, be all right. You can see I probably should have leaned it back a little, but what'll happen is as long as I don't shake the pails up too much, it'll settle down in the pails too, the debris. Inside the hopper, there's like a an orifice where all the material kind of drops down. So I just wanted to make sure that I didn't bring a lot of the dirt with me. I got a little bit when I first started. You don't need to sit here and watch this. That's what I'm going to do till that thing is empty. No, empty. That's the mud I was talking about that settles to the bottom. So I'm going to go clean that out, and we'll go see about that switch. There you go. You got it on the side now. There's the uh, information on it. We think our chances are that that's just going to pull out of there for us. <laughs> I bet you it's going to have like two spring-loaded tabs on the back side of it. It's not going to let us do our thing. Yeah. What is this? Is that just a fuse? That'd be, <laughs> be nice if it was just a blown fuse, but I don't see that being blown. No. That's not it. Did it give us access though? Yeah, I can see a tab. Might be. We might be able to get in a little screwdriver right there and right there. Pull them in and bring it up and give that a shot. Game of operation. There we go. Here's that one. So you can get a little tension on that side. Can't see. Why don't we? Try it without the. You know, we're going to get one side, the other side's going to pop in. That's exactly what's going on. We're going to chase that game for a couple of minutes. And that side lifted first and come back to the one I get. Did I lose it? Do I got it? One of you guys would grab that other end. I would really appreciate it. Fortunately, I think it might have more down by the switch. A little fighter. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. It's got more. Thought we had it. Hey, you wanted to see what's inside an ultrasonic cleaner as much as I did. It's a whole bunch of them looking things. Yeah, it had four tabs on that switch. Wanna see? Yeah, it's got two there, two down there. 
when we get that squeezed out of there, we'll pop that forward and uh, see what we got. That wire just came off of the lower level. I see we get ourselves a test light. Yeah. See if we have power going through these two from there to there. If not, we are going to get rid of that. We'll put that right to the power coming in. I'm pretty sure that this switch kind of seems to what it's supposed to. Actually, it's got another set of terminals which I bet is opposite. I wonder if those two might work. You guys may have got a better view than, of it than I did, but I went to go put that ground back on and it's like really sloppy. I have a feeling maybe that just kind of vibrated itself back. Maybe the switch is fine. So let's go and put power to it. We'll be ginger with that because there's a whole bunch of electrical components up in there too. But let's go put the power switch back on it again. We'll give that a little bit of a crimp and see if it turns on. They hit it with a glue gun, but it doesn't look like they got that much on there. We may come back and do the same idea, but we'll just get overzealous with it, you know? Uh, let's try this from afar. <laughs> yeah, let's go click it over. It lights up when it turns on. Nope, that was not it. It is still not working. Psst. Yeah, still no good. That wasn't it. Or does it work? And I was a goof and didn't put the fuse back in. That'll get you, huh? What was that like that? Yeah, that might uh, give you better search results, wouldn't it? Let's go reenact it again. And poof. <laughs> yeah. Ah, yeah. Whoops. Go ahead. Have you. All right. Let's go. Get rid of them. So, we want to probe. You can get one on there. That's going to be the tough one. It's got all kinds of, just stab right into it. See if we can get a reading across it. Open. glue potting material off. Go see if that's another, see if this one's another switch on that same one. Yeah, nothing on that one either. Should they work? Works. That switch does nothing internal. Nothing. You have nothing going across that switch. At all. Switch is no good. So we want to go and take where this comes in on that one. Right? So we'll still have the fused circuit. We just won't have the switch. 
put that back on and to the ground the other half of it All right. Come in. let's go plug that back on again and just make sure the screen turns on but I think that's going to be our issue All right, let's go plug it in and see if the display power is up ha alright we got it so all I'm going to do is button it back up it was definitely that switch is probably just not rated for the current that's going through it but, uh, we still have a fuse to link we just don't have an on off switch but we do have an on off switch because of, of that plug I showed you you want to see what's inside that is what's inside and there's your little speakers shaking things up they say 60 watt 40k Hertz at 60 watts six of those glued to the bottom of the tub let's get it reassembled see if we can uh, secure those three they're still doing something a little bit of uh oh Not bullets let's see if I can squeeze my my thumb in there that's pretty good anyway I don't think that is going to go anywhere you ever get glue gun on your fingers that feels good let's see if I could do this without wearing it But again, I, I can't vouch for this being the best solution to go use in one of these. It's just something that I am trying. So if you're trying something on your own, you're on your own. I make no claims to. But so far, it seems to be doing pretty good for me. Somebody's saying that ultrasonic cleans are just made for water and that you can't get the vibration out of a liquid. I don't know. I, I would think if it's the same, you know, density or weight as water i would think it would operate the same ready for the boom all right this was a gift from a youtuber jim uh i think they're the, the price has been coming down i'm pretty sure they're under 100 bucks on ebay now and before that, all you had was really those Harbor Freight ones. And I really mad. didn't have any good luck with that. But the, this seems fairly decent. Noise alert. So the two things you have on it is uh, vibration and then uh, the heat side. You could bring up to what you want. I think it was up to about 30 minutes. And then you have how much you want to cook. And so, uh, what are we at? Actually, 50 Celsius. Turn that on. And that'll heat up. The one thing someone wrote in the comments, too, kind of makes sense, that let it come up the temperature with the vibration off. And if you want to run the vibration, turn the temperature off because it is more powerful when the heater's not running and, and vice versa. That kind of makes sense to me too. So I'm gonna let that go for a little bit. We'll drop that in. Well guys, I think we're gonna leave this one right here. This video is uh, gonna be just on the ultrasonic cleaner by itself. I was actually working on a Honda snowblower that brought us over to here, but we'll make that its own video and this will be its own video of just uh, fixing the ultrasonic cleaner and a lot of people ask questions about it. So they have a better idea what it is, who makes it, and uh, apparently what to look out for as far as the switch is concerned. So she should be uh, ready to rock and roll. Again, it works fairly decent for me. And uh, for the price point of what they are, they, uh, so far, so good. It's, I think it's probably about two years now it's been running. So other than that one glitch. Guys, thanks for helping me fix it and getting this thing back up and working again. And uh, appreciate you hanging out in my garage with me and uh, doing a little bit of wrenching. So until the next one, I will see you later. One Honda carburetor into the bath it goes and it's nice that the float floats.